There's nothing like a bit of wacky Japanese sci-fi, eh? A cyberpunk-style sci-fi horror film where an alien parasite uses human hosts to fight each other to the death. Sounds awesome, huh? Well, the title is even better. Hi, I'm the Artie Dans and welcome to this review of the Japanese sci-fi horror film Meatball Machine. Yoji is a factory worker with a secret crush on Sachiko. After being attacked by a transgender woman, Yoji finds a strange breastplate which he takes back to his apartment. One night while walking the streets, he saves Sachiko from being assaulted and back at his apartment, the breastplate comes to life, taking over the body of Sachiko. Now Yoji must find a way to stop the parasite and recover her life. I've given it more story than this movie actually has, but is it worth watching? Well, do you like these types of movies? It's directed by one of the guys behind Yakuza Weapon and the creature effects are done by the same guy who worked on Yakuza Weapon and Vampire Girl vs Frankenstein Girl, Yoshihiro Nishimura, so you know they're awesome. These kinds of crazy Japanese Z movies are nice and accessible and popular here in the West. There's probably a few I'd recommend before this, like the aforementioned Yakuza Weapon and Vampire Girl vs Frankenstein Girl, but also movies like Gothic and Lolita Psycho or Zombie Ass Toilet of the Dead. I'd say once you've seen all those, then check this out. It's all about the visual effects here. When you first see the parasite and watch two parasitic humans fight each other, it's a great bit of the movie. It's also great there's very little CGI effects, but what is there is pretty cheesy. If you're a fan of rubber tubes and wacky wavy inflatable arm men, then you're going to laugh at what's on offer here. I don't think there is one standout scene here, however, but the sum of all parts go together to make the end product. And for this movie, there's a lot of parts. I'm just not sure they all gel well together. This movie never really goes anywhere. The final scene with the parasites explaining what's happened feels more tacked on than part of the original, but it still really doesn't explain why the whole movie has happened. There's a lot of misogynistic language and situations in this film. The way that Sachiko is treated, even by Yoji, isn't handled very well and is a little uncomfortable. Even though the movie alludes to a lot of sexual references, there isn't actually any nudity. There is a lot of phallic imagery, however, but I don't think you'll be watching it for that. The eyeball torture scores a thumbs down from me, though. Eyeballs are sacred, and I hate watching things pierce them. The color correction is a little nauseating. Now, this might be the desired effect of the director, but now that the movie has been transferred to high-definition digital, it just makes it look like a bad VHS bootleg copy. There are more things I didn't really like about this film, but I've only got so much time for this video. It might sound like I'm negative on this movie, but I'm not. Taken for what it is, it's an adequate enough film that will satisfy gore and sci-fi lovers. There's no compelling story here, and you'd forget most of it an hour after seeing it, just like I did. But it's the cheesy effects you'll want to see, watch, and enjoy. However, confusingly, there's also a sequel made for this movie, which I should check out one day. I'm not sure what to score this, so maybe... the thumbs down. If you've seen it, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support my channel.